Charcot foot is caused by a combination of things. Um, it begins in patients that have usually significant loss of feeling in their foot, which is most commonly caused by diabetes, but in this country it can also be caused by genetic conditions and other diseases that cause loss of feeling in the foot. And Charcot foot develops because of a combination of that loss of feeling and then also good blood supply, usually, in the foot, and then microtrauma. Microtrauma means small daily activities where the foot is being mildly injured and they accumulate over time and cause the injury to become more significant. Sometimes there's even an episode where an ankle sprain or a mild injury occurs. And Charcot foot usually shows up initially with unexplained swelling, redness, and warmth. If you have Charcot foot, it is most likely that you're going to find that your foot swells abnormally and somebody may even ask you why your foot's swelling or you may look at it and wonder what's happening and, and be uncertain as to what's, what's going on with your foot. Uh, pain is often associated with it, but not always. So it may even be painless swelling. If this develops, then immediately you need to pay attention to it and seek medical treatment. So your doctor should be, able to, should be made aware that you've got this new onset of swelling, warmth, and enlargement of your foot. This is a condition that will progress and if not recognized will cause breaking up of bones where they break down into small pieces in your foot and it will also cause collapse of portions or significant parts of your foot. The most common places that Charcot arthropathy or Charcot foot occurs, and I'll show you on the model, is really across the middle of the foot where when these joints start to collapse, it can cause the middle of the foot to completely drop down through the bottom portion of the foot and can lead to ulcers and infections, calluses, and significant deformity. The first place it occurs is that middle part of the foot. It can also occur in the ankle. If it occurs in the ankle, then it can cause extreme deformity of the ankle, where the ankle can turn one or the other direction and then cause ulcers to occur on the sides of the ankle. If an ulcer or a hole occurs on the foot in this circumstance, this can sometimes lead to amputation and other more, more significant uh, disease where uh, the infection can lead to organ failure and even sometimes death because of how significantly this progresses and how rapidly it progresses. So I can't emphasize how important it is that if unexplained swelling occurs in your foot that you see your foot doctor and have this explained and then have it treated. There's very little that you can do from home to treat Charcot foot. When this occurs, it needs to have, you need to seek medical treatment. However, there are many things that you can do at home to prevent this from developing. And usually what we describe is a way of taking care of your foot when you know you have lack of sensation. And many of those things are what a diabetic patient should take care of on a daily basis. Checking your foot regularly, looking for signs of redness, blisters, swelling, any changes on the foot, taking care of your skin, which includes moisturizing creams and sometimes soaks. Epsom salt soaks are probably not as good of an idea if you have diabetes, uh, and even just a mild soap can be helpful. Uh, this can be done for five minutes in the evening and then a moisturizing cream applied to the foot. Uh, in addition, you should be careful about walking barefoot and really shouldn't do so if you've lost feeling in your foot. Uh, the foot should be protected by an appropriate neutral shoe and I would even suggest a household shoe for you to use so that you don't have the potential of twisting or injuring the foot unknown to you. When you seek treatment for this, your doctor will initially probably consider x-rays to image the foot, and then the next thing he'll probably do, uh, once those x-rays are obtained, are to do tests to ensure that you don't have an infection as another explanation for why you have swelling and warmth and redness in your foot. Once the infection is ruled out or, or uh, ensured that you don't have that, in, or you are ensured that you don't have that infection, uh, then treatment for Charcot foot can occur. And usually it requires an, a, an initial period of immobilization, which means either a cast or some type of a very well uh, created walker boot or fracture walker, or some type of a device that holds your foot in a, in a very neutral position. Many, many doctors will also recommend that you remain non-weight bearing or not put weight on your foot for an extended period of time. And this might be anywhere from a few weeks to even a few months, depending on the type of deformity that your foot may be at risk of developing. 
There are also some other devices that can be used, including something called a crow boot. And your doctor may also recommend a type of a, of a custom brace that's molded to your foot, usually using a cast, and then created out of plastic materials with a soft lining on the inside. This boot may be worn anywhere from six months, even up to a year or longer, depending upon how significant the deformity may develop or may already be present in your foot. Even if, de if deformity develops, this can be treated. This condition can be treated with different types of orthotics, shoes, braces, and many times surgery may not be necessary. However, if this progresses, if this condition progresses, there's a reasonable chance that you may need to consider surgery to reconstruct the foot or, in some instances, amputation may be the only option. Uh, if amputation does occur, often it is required to make you better able to function in life and usually is a step forward after the deformity has become severe.